going to talk about electric fields. <clears throat> so, um, electric field, is that a vector or a scalar? It is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction. So the magnitude, don't be scared by that. That's just the number, the absolute value of that and direction, which way it's pointing. The source charge, this is the charge of an object that's creating the electric field versus a test charge is the charge of an object that is in or experiencing the electric field. So one's creating it, the other one is in it, experiencing it. The variable for an electric field is a capital E. And um, first, there's two equations for electric field. The first is this, the most basic one. Electric field is equal to electric force over the charge on a test charge. Um, so what does that mean? So what that's talking about is, so let's say you have an electric field and um, we're going to stick a test charge in there. So it's some object with a charge on it, has some charge, and we want to know how much force that would, that charge would experience at that location. And so what it is, is the ratio of how much force newtons over how much charge there is per one coulomb. So that gives us the unit of electric field is newtons per coulomb. Um, so <clears throat> a way, to, another way conceptually to think of this is um, at a certain location in space over here, like if we stuck in a, an object, a uh, charged object at this location, how much force would it experience? So that's what an electric field communicates. It's kind of like the promise of electric field. If you stick something charged at this location here, how much force would it experience? That's what an electric field communicates. So the other equation for electric field is this electric field is equal to this constant 8.99 times 10 to the negative or to the positive ninth coulombs constant um, multiplied by the charge of the source source charge over the distance of separation squared, or how far it is away from the source charge squared. Where did that come from? Well, it came from these two equations. So we have Coulomb's law, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute this in for electrical force, for the electric field we just found. And so what happens here is uh, this cancels out the test charge, and we're left with this expression, which is not the same one here. Um, so based upon this equation, what would cause the electric field to increase? Uh, well, if you would increase the source charge, um, charge of the source, or if you would uh, get closer to the source charge, so decrease the distance of separation. Um, all right, so electric field lines. So we use these to um, illustrate electric fields. So of a positive charged object, this creates field lines that are going outward, pointing away from the charged object. So it kind of looks like that. And then negative uh, charged objects create electric field lines that are going into or in, inward towards pointing towards a charged object that looks like that. Okay. Now you can con you can get a combination of different uh, things. So the most simplest combination are these. So you have two positives. What does that look like? So again, they're creating outward directed fields. Both of them are creating electric fields going outward. And so the combination of those two looks like that. Kind of like a Okay, and then inward, sorry, you have two negative, has the same pattern, but they're directed inward. And then you have a positive and a negative, goes out of positive into negative. It looks like that. So, um, how do, what information can we glean from electric field lines? Well, this, um, the closer electric field lines are together, the more densely packed they are, the stronger the electric field is at that location. So here we can see, right here, we have a strong electric field. 
Um, and over here, it's a weaker electric field. Same thing over here. Here is a really strong electric field. And in this region there, see how the electric field lines are far apart um, from that. It would be a weaker electric field. So there you go. Oh, just kidding. Uh, how is the charge distributed arranged on a solid conductor? We talked about this a little bit in class, but on a conductor, it's always the charge resides on the outside. So if it's if there's natively charged, the extra electrons go on the outside. If it's positively charged, the extra protons are on the outside. It's always on the exterior of a conductor. So the net electric field, because of that on a conductor, is always zero on the inside of a conductor. So the middle the interior of a conductor always has zero electric field. And that's what we got.